time now for the Betway Waiter to Win show as we look at race number three out at Hollywood Beds Gravel. Of course, it's our big day. I'm with Daryl Marie, and we're going to talk about race number three right now. And this is, of course, uh, the race, Daryl, that we've studied quite uh, quite a bit in terms of everybody talking, well, one way traffic does appear to be the right one and should just about win. Well, he certainly was the right one last year, Clyde. Um, he absolutely bolted up. I think he's had a perfect preparation. Last time out, the race wasn't run to suit. They crawled up front. He was caught flat-footed in the straights. I think he's going to run a big, big race today. Dangers, I've got healthy respect for the two Mark the Cock inmates. Union Square, you know, he gave one of the Hollywood bets, Durban July, leading lights, Winchester Mansion, a lot of weight last time out. He's unexposed of this trip. The blinkers come off. If he stays, he could be effective. And then Aragosta, he's super fit. He's a stayer. I'm sure he'll be ridden forward. And he's got a chance to pull this off. It's interesting. We spoke to Michael de Kock on the July panel and he said, listen, Union Square will stick you out if you watch him at home and gallop because he's an unbelievable racehorse. In terms of gallop at home, he says, you, you know, he just blows you away. So just take a note of Union Square. Don't leave it out. And they do rate this horse Street Otter. There's some reference. That's a look at the third. We're now going to take a look, of course, at what we're doing in our place accumulator. On to race number four. Now we go. This is the pick six. Don't forget, there's two million rand in the pool to start with. They're hoping 20 million. Some are saying a little bit more, Daryl, which is quite interesting. We had Gabriel Soma on the show, and he said he doesn't want to know about this horse runaway song. He's bankering it in the pick six. He says it can't lose, and that's his banker on, on the day. I mean, I don't know how you see it and what you think. Nobody wants to go out the first legs, so and maybe there's two plays. Yeah, well, it's hard to bank a horse that's yet to prove and he gets a trip, Clyde. But the way he enjoyed the step up in distance last time out is encouraging if he sees it out it's an extra 600 meters it's a long way to go but it he he does settle in running he's got a great turn of foot and um i think they're aiming him at uh, the the gold cup so so they're certainly going into this uh, race uh, confident that he's going to see it out what will you do in the big running yes Clyde. um you know gabby bank a horse that's yet to get the distance let's see if he does on his running style and his breeding, I suggest, I think he will. Um, you know, they got the Gold Cup in mind, which um, uh, they think he, he believes he's uh, of that quality and he'll get the trip. I've just backed him up. I don't think it's a clear-cut uh, race. You know, I was very impressed with Future Pearl's last start. He came into the straight. Samanga went towards the inside running rail. It got tight for him. He never got stuck into him, Clyde. I, th I know he's going to up in the ratings a lot, but he's an improving three-year-old. The race doesn't even stop over there. I've added a few more in. Arumagum at the weights has got a chance. And just put a line through Senso Unico's last run. He's a plodder. He was at the back of the field. He had no chance from there. He will run a big race. And for trifectas and quartets, if you're looking for an upset, Senso, Senso Unico is the one. Okay, so there we go. There's the summary of the opening leg of the pick six, guys. It's entirely up to you. Darren Burrows, as you know, is our key man when it comes to pick sixes. That slide's been worked out, as you'll see in a moment, by Darren himself. On to race number five now, and this, of course, is the Golden Slipper. And, well, how good is Mrs. Geriatric? She's just unbelievable. This morning, well, as you can see with the beautiful scenery in Durban as to where we are, the weather is magnificent. You couldn't ask for better, let me just tell you. What a day it's turned out to be. Mrs. Geriatrics, everyone's saying, listen, you know, did, did she even have to run? Because she would have won, she may have won champion two-year-old Equus, I think, whatever the case may be. But that aside, I suppose they're going for all their worth and to prove their worth. And what do you say? Clyde on paper, she's going to take a power beating. I think she's certainly the best fully heading into this race. Uh, but this race tends to spring a, a surprise every single year. That's the concern. Uh, not always the best fillies win this race. And uh, on paper, it appears to be a one-off race. I mean, she's, she's able to switch off the pace and not get caught up in a speed duel. And uh, she can certainly turn it up, uh, turn it on. Um, just an interesting jockey change. Aldo Damay is not riding, Clyde. Mm. And Pierre Stradom has taken the ride in distant winter, who looks to be held on a line through winter cloud. So I don't make her her immediate danger. I'm looking towards 
the Lucky Larkas's elegant ice. I've been very impressed with her to date. She's such an imposing filly. And I don't believe we've seen the best of her yet. On paper, she's held, but I, I think she'll get first run on Mrs. Geriatrics. And if you're looking for an exact inclusion, I'd go elegant ice. Yeah, I saw Lucky on the plane coming in. He actually mentioned the elegant ice of the two, to be honest. And uh, let me tell you, I saw Glenn Gotson and, and uh, you know, Christoph Simeon was riding this horse race over. They don't want to know. Anyway, it's jackpot time. The Betway jackpot's about to get going. Don't forget to get your Betway account on with all these initiatives that are going on, all these bets. The 6% back on your tax if you win, the 6% turnover over, over on your tote turnover. It's all happening. Here's a look at what we want to do. On to race number six now. This is the Golden Horseshoe, and uh, this is Give Me Another Chance. Well, it was priced up at around 5 to 2. Again, you'll know by now we had Michael Tocock on, and he said, listen, if this horse was drawn, you know, in the first three or four, I'd make him a banker. But the draws, are, it's problematic over this distance. We heard what Anton Marcus said. Great to have him on our panel. And uh, they were, you know, the draws are worried. Yes, Clyde, you know, even if he had a draw one to four, I wouldn't make him a banker. Okay. There's some serious horses in here with the likes of Guy Gibson. He's got a tremendous career ahead of him. I think he's going to go through the divisions. He's going to win his races. I don't know how far he's going to be off turning for home. Yeah. And if he'll get there in time. But uh, the track is st uh, sticky and soft and it may suit him. Then you've got Sandringham Summer, who's probably going to push forward. He likes to race on the speed. Um, he's still learning about racing. You can see um, very greening running, but he's a super, super horse. I mean, he ran Lucky Lad to her neck on debut. Hmm. Lucky Lad could have progressed uh, in leaps and bounds. Um, he's having his peak run. Lovely sort. I th I'll make him a player. Yeah. And then the filly's very, very interesting. Golden Tatiana, you know, two and a half kilograms. I know they're just about to turn three, but... Um, she gets a bit of weight off her back because of the sex allowance. She's a high-class filly, and um, I wouldn't be surprised to see her win. Okay. Just a reminder, Liz, I've heard what you've said. A reminder that the pen when we're recording around 26, but with this sun, I think it's going to drop you. That's going to improve much the better. Not that there's no doubt about it. In terms of the false rail, remember the first six races. The false rail is out, uh, they say, six metres, and then for the July onwards, it's only out two and a half metres. So horses are going to be using a lot of the outside the first half, don't forget. And it's virgin territory for the July. Keep that in mind as we go. That's what we look at as we go into our next race. The Hollywood Bets Durban July, it's that moment, Daryl. It's unreal. It's already. We are beautiful. We're so lucky to be in Durban, everybody. And for those of you that aren't, you might be a terrific team watching from here, wherever you may be. We wish you everything of the best. Well, see it again. Remember now, the false rail. This is the first race. Uh, as we're recording this morning, quite bright and early with uh, Andrew Bond behind the camera. Let me just say to you this much, that uh, at the end of the day, they're going to be racing on virgin territory now to, the, to a certain extent. They've been using a lot of the outside, what I would assume they would have been. And now here comes about two and a half metre false rail. See it again. Saw Pierre Stratham. He said, Clyde, I've beaten without question, Daryl. I've beaten him twice. Yeah. I'll beat him a third time. Richard Ferry says, no, I'll win it. I mean, every jockey you've spoken to, we were on the panel last the various panels, and everybody seems to think they've got a chance, which is natural in the July, right? It's an easy game, isn't it? Like? I like see it again in Rain in Holland. I now got uh, I shouted at for saying that Rain in Holland, I think we'll go start to finish, but that's okay. <laughs> Everyone's entitled yeah. to a view. What do you think? Yeah, that false rail is obviously coming in, Clyde, but be believe you me, they're not going to be stuck on the fence or one off the fence and wait for a run on a short straight. They'll be fanning out in the July. It's a big field. Um, I'm leaning towards the daily news form line. I like uh, Dave the King. If he, if he just settles in running, I like without question. I like see it again. Um, you know, it's a big field. You need a lot of luck in running. Uh, that's a major part of here. But of the balance, Clyde, I'm only leaning to one other horse, and that's the run of safe passage in the Gold Challenge. I thought his run over the mile was outstanding. I liked what I saw in the latter stages. Each and every start has come on in leaps and bounds. Uh, many were put off by the gallop. Um, I don't know what to say about that. Well, Mark he, said Mark he's not, not a... a yeah, he doesn't gallop well. Yeah. Um, for Cortez, Dirt again also represents that form line. He raises his game every time in the Durban July. Uh, Hollywood bets Durban July. Um, those are the form lines I'm leaning towards, Clyde. The Daily News 
and the goal challenge. If anything else wins, unfortunately, I'll be coming up unstuck. Okay, so the form line for Daryl Daly News form line or safe passage. I like see it again. I think it'll win, and I think Rain in Holland's the danger. Just a personal. Darren Burrows has got a view. We're going to have a look at that. Remember now, there's a quartet carryover. Get that quartet on. It's very important. And just by the way, from Betway's perspective, just a shout out to Jonathan Bloomberg. Unfortunately, he had to leave. He lost his dad, Nick. We wish him everything of the best. Play well in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. to the Garden Province. Now, this is a great race. Princess Keller and Desert Miracle. We know what they're about. They've bumped each other. They've seen each other. They, you know, they all kind of talk to each other. And, uh, well, you know, Michael to cock. We asked him, Mike, you're best on the day, Michael. He said, Desert Miracle. But Princess Keller's no pushover. Well, Clyde, it's ha ha class fillies. Um, we assume that Princess Keller is going to get first run on Desert Miracle. Um, I've just looked at the fillies drawn on the inside of Princess Keller. I don't believe Richard Free is going to want to get stuck behind them. So in my mind, I see her pushing forward and getting first run on Princess Keller. And uh, the all depends on how much ground Desert Miracle is going to have to make up. Um, we know that she's certainly capable. Christoph gets a great tune out of her. And uh, she's got a tremendous turn off, which is going to come into this race in such good order. She's had two lovely runs. Um, very hard for me to come here and separate the two of them. Just take note that Golden Hostess is now ridden by Grand Funny Cack. Uh, if you're playing, obviously, quartets and trifectas, she's a must inclusion. We heard from Pierre Cornet offer. He doesn't wa want to know about Marina missing a place. Mm. So I think um, focus around trifectas and quartets. Yeah. I'm leaning towards Princess Keller just because of the way I read the race. And, and Gavin Arena, we saw, he doesn't want to know about Feather Bower missing a place either. But at the, the, the top end, it's the two. It's the two horse race we've been waiting for. Is it going to materialise that way? We'll have a look. We've got some selections for you. Now we go on to the Post Merchants ninth race. Now remember, this is Jackpot 3, in which is a half a million rand carryover. So the Jackpot is likely to get to around 2 million rand and working that jackpot out very quickly. And just um, Thunderstruck is, has been the talking horse. Top of the boards at 3 to 1 at the moment. But I guess there are a couple in here, like Cosmic Highway, uh, for example, who would have a chance, I guess. And I'm not sure if there's a, one or two shooties at the, in here that you might want to consider, Daryl. No, you know, Thunderstruck last time really bounced back to his best. It just showed uh, that he is a sprinter. Um, if you fancy his chances, you have to include Sergey. Nothing separates in the two on paper. Um, yeah, so they certainly are the leading lights of your cloud. If you want to dig a bit deeper, Cosmic Highway, we saw him in the diadem. He really never moved. Keegan de Mello never moved on him. And I thought he's going to go and uh, sweep a lot of the, the, the sprint features, but since then he's lost the plot. He's obviously had the unkindest cut of all. Uh, I don't know his well-being, but we know he's got the ability, and uh, let's hope that he comes back to what he's shown he's capable of. If you're looking for a, a bit of an upset, Clyde, yeah. don't look past the Drill Hall winner in Silver Operator. Okay. Um, comes back in trip. I know it's not his ideal distance, but the blinkers go on. Yeah, yeah. And we've got to put him in. That could just do some magic. Let's All right. see. Well, we've got one worked out for you. I personally, Daryl, if you've got a bank in the second jackpot, I'm, I'm banking quasi for sure. Personally, I think it's overs myself. <laughs> myself. But is there a banker in your own little jackpot maybe no. later? Is there nothing? You, are you uh, covering a couple of horses? I think in the, a, in the last leg, go thin. You'll USA's get a, hope. You'll get away with USA's hope. Turpits okay. and fateful day. All right. Well, that's a look at the ninth. Check in jack, third jackpot time, everybody. Played very well from the Betway Waiter to Win team.